for break. If Omar Al Shaheen could possibly win this. Well, that would revolutionize Q Sports, not just in Kuwait, but in the Middle East. And again, good luck by Alvin, just as in the semi final against David Arcady. Scratched on the break there. Could be so valuable. The first initiative. He was breaking good. Getting two, three on the board, keeping Omar in the chair until the commercial break, perhaps. How strong would that be? The biggest match of Omar Al Shaheen's career, without doubt. He's made it to the final, but he's got a big job on his hand. Rack number Alvin one. Has won this trophy Mr. Before, Ocean to break. And he gets the first rack. On the way. How about that for a break? Three balls down with a shot on the two ball, thin as it is, well playable. Needs to play with side. Needs to get to the left of the three ball. The amount of left makes the shot quite a bit harder. He could also just play to go towards the three, even running into it. Or play for the three nine. Nice bump. That was very useful indeed. Could have gone more awkward. It actually turned out pinpoint perfect. Big time player, Elvin Ocean. One of the best in the world but excels on the biggest stage. Hasn't won so many European titles or Euro Tour titles. Yeah, that's right. He's definitely a big time player. He loves this arena. Likes playing in front of a crowd on TV. Very smooth cueist as well. And it's worth bearing in mind that in the semi-finals he secured six racks by breaking and running out. Pot success rate in that semi-final, 99%. He's been playing solid and consistent throughout the whole tournament. But after the jump against Woodward, score 6-5. That's when everything kicked into place. Has gone up the gear. And that is the, the kind of start you dream about. Winning the lag, breaking, potting three balls on the break, and then knocking in the rest of them. Albin Aushan leads 1-0. First time I played pool was uh, when I was like four or five years old. Um, I was quite small back then, uh, so we had a little chair where I was standing on it and uh, my father helped me, my sister was already playing and um, I like to, to look back at those times. My first cue, as far as I remember, was I think an old one from my sister, but uh, I have to lie if you ask me about the brand. When I won the, a men's tournament in my state, and I was like 10 years old or something, so that was a big memory. Yeah, of course, I mean, when you're young, you always look up to people like uh, Ralph, uh, Efren, Busti, and uh, Johnny Archer, and it's nice to see them. They're still playing on the tour. The names of his heroes 
And what about these names? If he's a multiple winner of this World Nine Ball Championship, he joins Johnny Archer, Fong Pang Chow, Torsten Homan, and Earl Strickland with that distinction. First time I saw Albin was in Klagerfurt, the Lindworth Trophy in his parents' club. He was Rack 14 two. at the time, Our current ranked one number one to in zero Austria, in favor of and Mr. Ocean. played with his Mr. break. Mr. Ocean to break. Was a mate with a phenolic tip, Carl. <laughs> Yeah, I remember many years ago playing on a Euro tour and I played Albin and he was a very angry pool player. He used to throw the cues around and yeah, talk yeah, yeah, and yeah. Yeah. very angry. We did see a little bit of that at the Predator Championship League pool event, which he went on to win. He did have an excuse there, though. He played 52 matches that week. I think he was a little frazzled towards the end. Well, he did what he needed to do in order to get the W. And he did what he needed to do on the break. Yeah, well, you can play this a few different ways. I think you have to go around. It's most natural with left. Yeah, three rails playing for the blue two in the same pocket that's nicely done bones please silence was distracted somewhat under hit the shot now he has a big angle on the Attention, two please the three the red three seems to pass the four and nine to the pocket below on the right so he doesn't have to slow roll the two can play it with a bit more pace. Albin knows himself as a player. He always walks around the table, looks very calm, never looks flustered. He's got a good tempo. Just over and positioning a little bit. Might decide to just leave this long and take his medicine. From the short drill, two to nine is difficult. Would need to play it with check side. Swing it round for the side pocket. Or straight back draw. It's the easiest this. with inside spin check side go to the rail but check side here doesn't grab as much as on club tables unless you hit the ball fat so one could make the argument he mishit and made the ball no he used a bit more flash of the five to get that angle for the cue ball This is just the start he was after because he knows Omar was a little bit edgy in his semi-finals and rightfully so. So if we can put a few racks together here, wow, it's a dream start. Cue ball has been very good in the opening two racks. In June, cold isn't a word you associate with Kuwait. But right now, Omar Al Shaheen is being kept cold because Alvin Aushin has played flawlessly in the first couple of racks. He is looking ominously good. The well, first time I played pool, uh, my big brother take us to a pool hall and he was playing pool, so he get me into it. I was I was a soccer player in the national team, so once I played pool, I find myself and 
I just flow into it. The magician, Efren Batares. I was like uh, representing Kuwait for the like for, for the young like age, and uh, I won uh, I won the tournaments like in the final. I won nine nine one, so that was like that, was, that makes me happy and want to be like playing and achieve more. As a professional, like I feel like the first success is 2013 when I make it to the semifinal in China Open. Yes, that was a big moment for Omar Al Shaheen, undoubtedly the first score is player two from the Middle East to make a major semi-final. Ocean. Ocean, He's also gone deep in the Derby City Classic, finishing runner-up there. And before this, his best in the World Nine Ball Championship was five last sixteenths. So that tells us it's not a total surprise that he's gone the distance all the way to the final. Where he would like to go just one step further. Tall order if you're kept in the chair. Yeah, this is Albin's intention to get the one ball over to this side of the table every break. He will be queuing down over the three ball. That's hampering a little bit. But there's enough distance in between the cue ball and the red three. So it's not a complete disaster. He do, just went over and checked how much angle would be acceptable on the three. The more, the less he needs to force this shot. Nice. And that, fellows, opens up the distinct possibility of yet another break and run out. Now the difficulty or the challenge will be to manufacture the proper angle on the six later on. He'll now play the four, the purple five, but with the yellow, the nine low left of the six, the black eight low right of the six. He needs to set himself up well. I think on his position towards the six, rather too much angle than too little. Now just a trace of right hand spin. like just about the same angle on the seven and depending on the exact angle could have gone one rail with more angle I like going forward Carl two rails land in between the eight and nine yeah I think Albin Ocean will play Attention, that please. Has a very good cue ball, does Alvin, doesn't he? It? it always mm. lands nice on the next ball, which of course then makes that shot a lot easier. There you see, that's exactly what Mr. Lely was talking about using the two rails. Big margin for What a start! Awesome, Albin. Outstanding action. 3 0, just like that. Omar Al Shaheen, yet to play a shot.
Ladies and gentlemen, public announcement. Please ensure that your phone is off or on silent to ensure we don't have any broadcast interruptions. Once again, please ensure your phone is off or on silent so we don't have any broadcast interruptions. The man from Austria is laying down the law. Albin Auschen won the lag, and then he's run three consecutive racks from the break. It really is impressive stuff to stop this World Nine Ball Pool Championship final. From his perspective, it's three down, ten to go. This, of course, is an extended race to 13 for the whole shebang. Three to zero in favor of Mr. Ocean. Mr. Ocean to break. Three good breaks already, wants to put in number four. Two balls down, no shot on the two, the blue two. Good break. And in control. Yeah, he's controlling the rock very nicely indeed. Now the three wrecks that Albin ran, he had good positions, but he stayed in position. People can underestimate how hard it is and how much concentration it requires to keep setting that cue ball up for the next shot. It's so easy to lose the cue ball on this table. Super speedy cloth, miss hit that cue ball by two millimeters. And you're 20, 30 centimeters out of line. Easy safety and an easy hit for Omar. In nine ball pool, this is a chance. I mean, the kick, the kick is, it's not super easy, but it's easy enough to play return safety well he might have left the window oh wow look at that I don't know if you can see the potting angle no so was it a bad shot by Alvin or uh, a little bit one, yeah. a little bit players have a 30 second shot clock on their two ball the first shot after the break, Elbin had one minute. Extension, please. He decided and executed pretty quick. But luckily for Elbin, after Al Shaheen's resafe, 
There's a perfect distance between the rail and the cue ball. He's almost guaranteed to stick the cue ball there. Kick and stick, full ball hit. And try and make the two ball miss the three. This is a chance, Omar. This is your first real visit to the table in this final. You're 3-0 down. There's a long way to go. This is a tough opening shot. Now, if you see the pink four near the pocket, low left, low right Attention, here, please. near Omar, it will help the three ball. So he could opt to just change the two, leave a long three, knowing he would make it always. That was a little bit wild, to say the least. He's had a fortunate roll. There was no real need to be spearing it in at that pace. Wow, two ball flying from Trier. Yeah, what Albin, with all his experience in the Metro Arena, is showing that less is more. He never forces the issue or the position if he needs to. In a way, Omar got lucky. That wild miss. He snookered Elbin. And has the chance to snook him a bit better now. Yeah, he's trying to either miss the three ball and get the cue ball in. Oh, this is a huge mistake. I thought he could have played it into the edge of the three, which would have meant he could have just stopped the cue ball. Mm hmm As mistakes go, that really is unforgivable. But whenever the cue ball and the object ball are that close, it can always be a little bit of a little bit of a strange shot. Because you can't let your cue action go. Oh, Mr. Ocean misses a long two ball. So he's human. And if you're struggling, as Omar probably was, it's always good to see that your opponent is feeling the heat as well. Albin will know that was a big chance to keep the heat and really punish Omar. So he'll be sat there, disappointed. He's going to center table here. Ocean's queuing on the two ball didn't seem to have its normal fluidity. Seemed to prod at it more than normal. Yeah, I said before that people shouldn't underestimate how much concentration it requires to control the cue ball. <laughs> Inexperience again, Alex, oh, on this oh, table. Oh. Yes, definitely. Got to play this table with soft hands. Let the cue ball react the correct way off the rail. Yeah, play the table. Yeah, the chat before with uh, Rob Spencer and uh, about the difference between snooker and pool and that the pool players take time when the ball seem to be in a straightforward position. But that's in re regard to what you said, Carl, you really need to assess what the proper shot is. Well, that was much needed. In many respects, Omar al Shaheen rode his luck there, but he did get the rack on the board and that was the chief priority. He trails 3-1. Jasmine, you know your brother more than anyone. He's going to be really frustrated after that, isn't he? 
Well, yeah, but I mean, he had a very uh, awesome start, uh, run out three racks, and now it was a little bit of safety, tough miss now, but um, he's going to shake it off and just focus on the next game. Brilliant, yeah. In, in fairness, that's probably his first little blip of the day. He was faultless against David Alcady. He's been playing really well, really solid, and he's so focused now on this, on this match on winning that he won't let this small mistake now get into his head. He's way too experienced for that. It means the world to him, doesn't it? Because I know he was frustrated after the World Cup and the World Pool Masters. So this, this means everything. Absolutely. I mean, he was, you know, perfect at the Championship League pool. He won that with like 52 matches, then two tough events. And now he's in the final of the World Championship here in Match Pool, pool, pool Series. So, I mean, this is just amazing for him. It is amazing for him. What would you be saying to him now if you had the opportunity? Just stay focused, calm down, you know, just focus on your skills. I mean, he has all the skills that you need to be a world champion. So just do what you what you know to do. Yeah, absolutely. It's currently 3-1 to Albin Ocean. Back to you, Back. Phil. Number five. Our current Thanks, score Michael. is 3-1 in favor of Mr. Ocean. You know, I agree with Albin. Mr. Al sister there. To break. Pointless crying over spilt milk. Just get on with the next rack and hope that he gets a chance and that's Shaheen doesn't start potting everything. Yeah, that's it. It all depends on Shaheen's response if he's helped by the run of the balls. How much time Albert would get to sulk over that missed shot. Here it was still on. And now no more. can play a 2-9 combination. Would it be favored to make it, but he could play the cue ball up table. He can bank the two ball back up table and have the cue ball run into the nine. Anything else on offer? Not really. Don't Attention, think so. please. Looks like he's going for the nine. Oh, good effort. Dangerous shot, though, because the nine is always going to stay around that corner pocket, and you're never quite sure what you're going to lose. Yeah, the thing is, the three ball is on the right side. Without that three, he would have played it with left spin and a bit more speed. Had to play it with check now. Wasn't Limit. far away though, was no, it? No, it was sure. a good effort, but like you said, it's dangerous. Jacking up over the eight ball. And he needs to choose to go directly into the nine or off of the rail. I would play directly because it's more likely you'll keep the cue ball close to the rail if you miss it. Two ball will be flying around the table. Go at this with a bit of pace. Oh, and he's fluked the five. Showing Good news, off. the two's gone in though for Omar. In the replay. Yeah, a fluke on the four. Now the three ball, I don't think it banks. Well, you can bank it, but you have to load up. Give it a lot of speed. He's not going to play that, I guess. Yeah, needed to play it firmer. So let's watch Omar's stroke. He was struggling in the first half of his semi-final against Zolnoki. It was like finding a balance between compact and fluid. Yeah, I'd like to see this a lot smoother. Don't hit this hard as he fires it in. Yeah, that was it. That was like... A nice mixture. A little quick still on the transfer between backswing and final delivery. But he split the pocket. He's in the game. Yeah, Albin's had, um, well, he's had chances in every rack. Could easily be 5-0 up. Just these few balls remaining and... Omar's back in the match. 
long way to go race to 13 yeah but at least he settled himself you can see his demeanor his facial expression hasn't looked like this in the semi-final After Aushin's mistake-free start, it was a missed two ball in the fourth rack, a misjudged bank on the three in the fifth. And now, Omar al Shaheen. David Al Cady. Rack very, very number six. Our final. current score is three to two in favor of Mr. Ocean. Mr. Mr. Al Shaheen to, push. to break. Omar to break. Oh, that's a nice break. Straight down the nose. He does it a little different than other players. If we see in the replay, his the action with his bodies like a hip thrust or in breaks later to come most players when they break keep that left leg planted in the ground i've noticed the nine ball off the break he's pushing down towards the bottom rail a lot so i think mr layman needs to pay attention to that Second prize. This is will be super difficult for Albin. I think there's a gap between the five and the nine. And even if there were a gap, I'd almost opt for the Attention, kick please. shot. If that four is in the, in the way too much. There, he would need to draw it a lot. Make the cue ball arc after the long rail. It's doable, but you can't overhit that shot. Like medium hard, low with a little bit of check side on the ball. No contact. Start the clock, please. Didn't really dig into the ball. Hardly any curve on the cue ball. <coughs> Get away from the rail. And that sets him up nicely. Not 
as continuous as Albin's run of three in the beginning. But it looks like Omar will get these three wrecks, level the score. And he's looking so much better than in the semi-final. Yeah, I was just going to say he looks a lot more composed. Obviously the semi-final match that he ended up coming back to win. It will have settled him down. He's had a go in the arena, a go on the table. Cue ball bit low, smothered its speed. This is really not where he should have been. Shot. Looks a little straight, so he's going to have to take his medicine and just roll it through. Probably try and get near the left. Oh, he's tried to hold it. Mm, straight again. Straightish. Yeah. yeah, he's. Well, this is a little bit tricky. Is he going to play this with a little bit of drag, or is he going to play a stun run through? Oh, 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 he's feeling so much better now. We're in for a match, folks. Albert Ocean's missed two ball in the fourth rack. Gave Omar Al Shaheen just a little bit of daylight. Boy, has he taken advantage? We're on level terms.
We are witnessing the culmination of a terrific five days here at the Whirlpool Championship in Milton Keynes. And you know, it could go all the way. We weren't thinking that at the start when Albination was out of the gate so quickly. But Omar Al Shaheen is a fighter, as he showed in the semi finals coming back from 6 1 down there. He's back from 3 0 down here to tie the scores. And it wasn't just the fact he was 3 0 down, he hadn't had a single shot. Albin Ocean winning the lag and breaking and running each of the first three racks. Hardly a spare chair in the house. Great to see fans back for the final day of this championship. And I think they're going to be rewarded Brack. with a memorable Number classic seven. final. Our current score yeah, was a is all of a long rolling on the eight ball. A piece. A lot of confidence there Shaheen from Omar Al Shaheen. Difference of night and day. Omar now and Omar two year two hours ago. He's breaking good. Still not rewarded with the shot as the one ball found the side pocket and the seven blocks the two. We need to play a push. Yeah, I don't think off to a wonderful start in this match, running the first three, but he has made errors since. Now, in the push-out, you take in consideration what type of opponent you are playing. Elbin is really good in his safety and kicking. Omar is a shot maker. I would dare Elbin to shoot, to take a risk. Because Elbin knows that Omar will. So only in that way could Omar force Elbit to play something that he wouldn't like to play. Where do you push to, though? Anywhere where you leave a tough ball. shot. Long, jacked up, jump. Basically, Person, the ethos with the option. push out. Yeah. Ideally, if you can put a player in a place he doesn't want to be, that's your comfort zone. That's what you do. And even even a long shot where you don't get shape, but after which you could play a good defense. Like like the shot now, roll the two ball in, see the three and figure out what you're gonna do after. He will attack this. I'm sure. So his push out has paid off. Because he was he wanted to play this shot. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Defense. Nice. I like it. Even though he ran into the three ball, I, I didn't see this one co coming. Had he missed the three, it would have been a great shot. Alvin's just coming round because he might be able to play the two off the nine ball and it might slide towards that Extension. bottom corner. Extension, please. It'll go close. In this type of kiss shot, you can still manipulate the two. If you play it with draw, the two ball will pick up top spin and go through the nine ball a little bit. You can manipulate the deflection. Yeah, and he might play a good cue ball as well because the three ball's up the top. Yeah, this looks nice. If it misses the six, he might land on this in the right center. I think he's got a shot, Alex. Nice shot. Backswing. He's one of the best with the shot clock. Times it really good. Plays it into the right center. That gives him the perfect angle on the purple five now. 
This rat will just settle Albin down again. As you've seen, got to a good start. And a little bit shaky for the next three racks. It's a long race, though. Race to 13. Started out 128 players. Race to nine until we had 64 players. Eight ladies entered the World Championships this year. Albin's sister, she played. She got to the last 64. Indeed, as did Kelly Fisher and Veronica Ivanovskaya. Spread at the table. Plays lovely. Took some getting used to by the players in the beginning. But these two have it down. Especially Elbin. Tip top cue ball placement. To start off that dish, it was all about creativity. And when the two went in, you suspected that Alvin Ashen was going to regain the lead, and so he has at four racks to three. What a title this is to capture. You join so many of the all-time greats with their name engraved on the trophy. Now, this is just the relatively recent winners of this event. Fedor Gorsh was the defending champion. Joshua Filler was the, the champion in 2018. They both made relatively early exits. Alvin Auschen was the winner in 2016, overcoming Shane Van Boning in the final, 13-6 comprehensively. So he's been there before, he knows exactly what to do. He also lost in the final of the 2014 World Pool Championship to Niels Feyen. So this is his third final. It's a pretty sporty achievement. One of my most famous, or favourite, I should say, World Nine Ball Finals was the one when Fong Pang Chao beat Ismail Paez, the Mexican jumping bean. Right. He was so nervous, he was jumping it around three, every shot. Four, How he got to the four, final, two, three, I don't know. In favour of Mr Ocean. Mr Ocean, to break. Once again, in the lead, Melbourne Ocean. Squat that cue ball. Park the rock. Skadoosh. Beautiful. They see the nine ball again, Alex. Just floating through the pack, finding that bottom rail again. As long as it's not getting closer to the corners, I'm okay with it. Of course, you know, John Lehman will try and avoid this. Because that nine ball will only roll forward if there are gaps between the balls well, behind it. Well, you say that, Alex, but I prefer it to be on the spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because then at least it, there's a bit of a positional shot, maybe a miss. Where the nine is now, I mean, it's never going to be missed, is oh, it? Oh, the nine is too easy, yes. Yeah. But he's trying, you know, and then... Well, he needs to try harder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the conditions also change. So something that worked two hours ago, now maybe needs a different approach. Manipulate the wreck a little bit. P playing thin off the one. Didn't really want to bump the eight ball. He also could have played it thinner, make the cue ball come back straight, and use it 4-7. This was a bit of a containing shot by Elbin. Took the easy route, I think. Could pay for it. Trying to get the cue ball locked on the perp, uh, the pink four, sorry, and he does a wonderful job. Even yeah. without that kiss on the eight ball, when Elbin played that safety, Omar would probably have had a good layout, a good angle to play a good counter safety. It's a good shot as well because he had awkward queuing, he was queuing down over a ball. Extension, Extension please. I think it's so inspiring 
for all pool players to see how good the players are in bouncing back. So playing one back ma bad match or bad match below par match, trickling over the line and next match they're right back in the saddle as is Omar. Yeah, often pool matches don't always start the way you would like. Sometimes you don't really get a visit or you might make a few mistakes. What is important is to keep fighting. Keep grinding it out. Nice hit by Albin who had to load up that cue ball with maximum side spin. And the pink four ball will pot is just double checking. That's a little later on in the rack. That's can just he can he dig into the cue ball? He's rolling wood left. Nice, good speed. Nothing difficult here. Low right, medium stroke. Doesn't have to force, doesn't have to... Like a hold his speed on the stroke. Basically, you would like to hit every shot with this speed. Needs to watch out, I think. You know, he's, he's he pulls back pretty quick and then delivers, piston-like. And now it works, but I think it's real close to becoming snatchy. Yeah, you can see the contrast in both players. Albin's very smooth, pulls the cue back smooth with a little pause, and then delivers, where Omar's back very quick. Often you stop the, the cue too quick and then fire. Never seems to work too good. But at the moment, it's working. It is called, but as the pressure increases, intensifies, that's when the question mark applies. Strong focus, no question marks. A little bit of movement on that stroke, but what counts is this nine. And again, they are inseparable. It was 3-3, now Albin Ashen and Omar Al Shaheen have fought their way to 4-4. Now, interesting there that Omar was asking for a short timeout, but he was told by John Lehman quite correctly that there's a, a six minute timeout after rack nine, which is the next one. So Omar retracing his steps, going back to his chair. Better make it the quick one then. It was a good hit from Alvin, but unfortunately he left Omar a shot. And he did a good job in running the rack to tie the match up. Four racks apiece. It's just the kind of pool you would associate with a big final like this. Neither player dominant, although Ashen was early doors. What an arena, that view then. Rack really number nine. A beautiful we are currently all the the tied walked at one game of peace. Four steps, games of peace. Right next to the chair. And Mr. Al Shaheen to break. The crowd have got a little bit louder. He was in here at 12 o'clock. The bar was open. So, as we expect. Where's the cue ball? Don't be putting your hand in the pocket. Foul. Start the clock, please. So let's rewatch the break. What happened? Was it a kiss? 
Yeah, I believe a ball kicked it all the way up the rail. That's something that just can never be helped. That is agony when you're braking. You just want to snap your brake cue over your knee. Now, maybe a snooker player could think, why not safe break? Break soft, four balls need to hit the rail, but the rule that is in place also, that the forceful break is to be applied, and then even breaking in nine ball, it's such an advantage. Yes, sometimes you'll get a bad roll, bad run of fortune, but on average, in this tournament, I would estimate the breaking player wins 65-70% of all wrecks. It was only a minor breach of etiquette, but I don't think it was a good optic when he put his hand in the pocket there and got the cue ball. Never liked that. <coughs> Needs to get the extension out, Elbin. Probably also an extension, extension for the clock. An extra 30 seconds. Don't overdo it. Because the purple five and the green six below right will go to the same pocket. If he stays on the correct side. That was a fine example of playing the table and his cue action. Just smoothed it in at ease. Cue ball come back. Nice and nice and smooth. End of January, beginning February, we did a bit of work on his on his stroke. You know, he felt like he wasn't mechanic enough. Actually, the, the say, you know, not enough piston-like. So th the way that, for example, Filler and Shaw pull the trigger is very piston-like, compact and sharp. That's bulletproof. But if he's on, Albin, with his smoothness, is more like Suke. Very nice touch, never doing too much, and playing with a lot of feel and measure. Yeah, and the good thing with that is you're always going to give the pocket a little bit more of a chance to pocket the ball as well. So it's the unfortunate scratch, Phil. Made all the difference in that rack, which was over in double quick time. For the third time, Alvin Ocean leads. It was 3 0, it was 4 3, and now it's 5 4. Ladies and gentlemen, another great contest. Let's hear it for both of our contestants. Contest Omar Al Shaheen and Albin Ushan. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. <laughs> They're giving us a final to remember, that's for sure. But to help make your day more of experience, ladies and gentlemen, more prizes to give away. Give a warm round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, the killer, Joshua Filler. <laughs> Obviously, these events are very different now with COVID protocols. Usually I'm doing dance-offs, we're doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, so I'm being a little bit more conservative with COVID. But we have a little raffle. Everybody has a table number on their table. Now we're going to draw three numbers out with Joshua Filler. Okay, and if you're called out, you are going to win yourself a signed ball by Joshua the Killer Filler. So make sure you know your table number first and foremost. And if I ask you to put that box down really quickly, Joshua, we've got to be quick. I don't want Sky to get rid of me quickly. So let's draw the first one, please, Josh. What number is that? 30. 30. 30. 30. Three, zero. Good. That's one. Next one, please, Josh. Make sure you give him a good shuffle. 15. 15 is the next one. And the last one, Josh. Last one. 
11 is the last one. So if you've won, come and collect your prize over by the corner. But very quickly, Josh, you've won yourselves a whole bunch of titles. How amazing is it to have fans back here? I mean, it's the most important thing in pool to grow the sport. And uh, when I'm up there, when I'm up there, seeing the fans, it's amazing. So give them a big applause here. They they really deserve this. Ladies and gentlemen, round of applause for Joshua the Killer Filler. on the break and Albin is back in front five racks to four it's tense but it's a final these are the stats so far still plenty of time to go 60% on the break among of Albin safety errors two to one all spotted 49 to 32 long pot success 50% Omar there but what matters at the moment is that it's Albion Ocean 5 for ahead. Delighted to say Sanya Pedro Hanovic and Chris Cole is here as well. Uh, guys, it's quite loud in here at the moment. How have you seen the game so far, Carl? Yeah, it's been a great match so far. Obviously, Albion got off to a fly here. He broke and run the first three. And then he made a few mistakes, let Omar back in the match. And then Omar was a little bit unlucky on the break there. Random ball, kicked it in. But it's 5-4. It's been a great final. Sanin, you're watching it in the balcony up there. What's your thoughts on it so far? Yeah, I mean, Albin felt it all, already once. So he's a bit in the front, but he also have a pressure because all the arena is uh, screaming loud. Yeah. They want Albin to win, and it makes him a bit of pressure. And Omar is like fighting back. All of his matches, like I've seen, he was always down and he's coming back, so really nice of him. Yeah, he does have that fighting spirit, and yeah, it is very, very loud in here. Right, let's hear from the players before tonight's final. It's an awesome feeling. I mean, I can't wait to, to play the final. Playing good so far, feeling good, so I'm ready to go. I'm so happy to reach out the final, feel excited, you know. It's my passion, I'm gonna enjoy it. It's that feeling when nothing can go wrong, and of course, uh, David had some problems on the table, but uh, the only thing I could do was uh, not get him, get him to the table back again. So uh, I did a good job there. It's totally different. I, I didn't think about nothing. I just want to play, you know. And I was struggling in the beginning, but once I, I get to down six to one, I was just playing, total playing, and I get back in the match. I know he was pretty good uh, many years before. He was uh, he played all the the tour tournaments on the tour. He was uh, off for quite a long time, I would say. He's playing in the US now, Banks and uh, whatever, Billy and so on. Uh, so it's nice to see him back on the tour. He's a great player, he's a world champion, you know, no doubt about that. But I'm going to do my best, I'm going to play my game. I'm, you know, it's, you, you never know what's going to happen, it's, it's just a final. To get the name on the trophy is such a, such a special feeling, I would say. And uh, I don't want to think too much about it. Uh, there's one match to go and uh, I'm excited. You're going to see it. <laughs> the World Championship final evenly poised. But the good news on Match in Paul keeps on coming. We announced the Moscone Cup yesterday. And today, Emily Fraser announced the US Open is coming back. Carl, how much are you looking forward to that? Yeah, that's big news, that, because obviously it's not an easy time in the world at the minute, but Matchroom do what they do, the, you know, the Excel and Covey's not going to stop Matchroom, is it? 256 players, Atlantic, can't wait. I think that's the you a flight there. Um, Sanyin, <laughs> <laughs> very, very special tournament, the US Open. Yeah, it is. I've been uh, two years ago, I think, and it's it was one of a hell of a tournament, and I'm really looking forward for it. It's going to be a special, special tournament. And here is a reminder of those dates. So we've got the Moscone Cup to look forward to, which will make you Christmas, no doubt. And then when the summer finishes, you're feeling a bit gloomy, you turn the telly on, and we've got the US Open Pool Championship, 13th to the 18th 
of September from Atlantic City. We cannot wait. But now all the focus is on this special, special day, the World Hall Final. Here we go. Back to the commentary team, Phil Yates. Thanks, Michael. Yeah, couldn't be any better poise than this, could it really? And they've had their short break. So now it's a, a run to the line. Scratch on the break by Omar Al Shaheen in rec nine with ball in hand. And Rack Mac number Lich, 10. The current control. score is five to four. The Austrian in favor of taking Mr. the lead Ocean. once again. Mr. Five Ocean for up to break and breaking. Look at that beautiful cue ball. And again, no position. The four and six colliding mid table. The result, six in the side pocket. Four ball ruining the party. No love, as Billy Thorpe says when he's in the box. Nine balls flirting with the bottom rail again. It wasn't just the collision, it was that specific type of collision. He's been really unfortunate there. Push out to be played. Hmm. He doesn't, if you sense the cue ball near the nine ball, that's what he was looking at. Push he out doesn't ball. want to show the right side of the one. He'll make sure. Does show him the right side of the one. Option. And here, many options for Omar. A little teaser. I'm sure he will not give this back. Well, I can't be sure, but I don't assume so. shot offense defense resulting in a snooker so does this come into the category of a bad push Alex uh, I didn't like it. It, it it wasn't an easy shot and Omar could easily have exposed the one ball but it was easy to decide to play it meaning he had many options Yeah, I think I think it wasn't the sharpest. Can he and he can with left spin to open the angle and get behind the one ball. Two rails. Gotta be careful you can scratch in the top left. One for Ow. Carl. And ball in hand for Omar. Well, in rack six, Aushin failed to escape from a hook. This time he does make contact, but it's a, a foul shot nevertheless. Well called by Vice Captain Boys. It looks not a bad shot. It looks like a bad shot, but it's, it's millimetres away from a kick and stick, as you like to call it, Alex. It's just one of them things that can happen on that type of shot. But it's a good safety from Omar. And it's created this chance. Yeah, so you asked me if it was a bad push. Even though it was difficult, just too many outs. Too many ways for Albin to lose that safety battle. What a match. Nice. Anything is good enough, but this is not perfect. On the low side of the five, with the choice to stun and go directly to mid table or stun over to the side rail, which I like a little more. As we've discussed where the nine ball is, it's not on its spot, is it? So position is guaranteed and 
Oh, I don't want to see nine balls missed at this angle. Very clear there. That compact action from Omar. Equalising once again. Indeed, the Kuwait Tiger is not going away. For the third time, he achieves parity. 3-3, 4-4, now 5-5. Match on. A final that's living up to expectations. And you could make a, a cogent case to say that was all about the push-out. That was the central moment of rack number 10. Carl called Ian off and when it went in and you looked at the layout of the balls on the table, you just knew he was going to pounce. It's been a great week all over the place in so many different ways. But now the crowd's arrived, that adds the extra dimension, the atmosphere. Let me just take this opportunity to thank some very special people as well, by the way. The tournament organisers, Jake Aspey, Nick Teal, Phoebe Millam, who does such a wonderful job, Matt Lynch, and of course, the boss. So you just made sure you get the gig next time. <laughs> <laughs> Phil Yates ticking all the boxes. <laughs> no, I have to say, though, seriously, Emily does a, a wonderful job with her team. They are so hardworking. Every morning I get in really early, but they're always right, here before me. 11. Yeah, they're leading they're the way in the world of nine ball pool. Putting so, uh, events on the calendar. To break. A string of events, Metro Pool Series, and building towards a world ranking. Five, five, race to eight. Yeah, we're just talking about the US Open. But in December, it's the big one, the Moscone Cup. Yeah, so Alex is the, the captain. You're the vice captain, Cole. What am I? The dog's body? Play, play advice, me, Phil. Who's that? You. <laughs> Snooker again, push out again. Push and out for forward. the in crowd, we like to watch those push outs. We can learn a lot about the game, but also about the player. Is he aggressive? Is he smart? Is he pushing his chips all in? This is not an all in push out. He's tying up to two, three and nine. So it doesn't matter so much what you can do with the one. Even a containing safety here would be good enough. Elvin was quick to decide there, I thought. Just as he has been quick to play his push-outs earlier in the match. Takes those a little bit too easy, I think. Yeah, he didn't walk around the bottom end of the table, he just went to the top and... You could see him just lift his hand Maybe, up. just maybe. Oh, so slightly. That he doesn't value Omar's moving game. The safety and kicking department. Extension. High Extension. enough. <laughs> it's unlike him, I think. He just took a qu quick glance. It works. Nice mess, eh?
Wants to shut the Omer. Keep him under pressure. Attention, please. Surely he's not going to attack the one. Okay, so he's he's banked the one ball up table into the cluster that he that he made on the push out. Well, would have been a good shot had that one ball been hidden. This is an easy out for Albin. He's looking if he even has a chance to make the nine. Yeah, and he's looking closely, so I think he fancies this. I think it's close. It's close and it's there. Bit of a strange shot from Armour that he tied it up on the push out, took a risk. Nothing like a good combo though. 1-9 in that instance. And try as he might, Omar Hal Shaheen just can't hit the front. Alvin Aushan is back in the ascendancy at 6-5. 1-9. And for him all is fine. Yeah, I don't think that's bad luck for Omar. Even if the nine wouldn't have been on, it was a position for the Austrian Albin to overtake the safety battle, the initiative. That was a crowd pleaser, wasn't it? It didn't please him, though. Kuwait, you know, is a very small nation on the northern tip of the Persian Gulf. Only 4.5 million residents. They played in the World Soccer Cup in 1982. But in terms of sporting achievements for that country, this would rank very highly indeed. Yeah, I already spoke to uh, a Kuwaiti friend of uh, Omar who's here, and he's, he's on the board of the Olympic Committee in Kuwait. Um, and he says that already Back getting to the final is going to mean so much. Was already receiving in compliments, congratulations. Ocean. Mr. Ocean. And it's going to boost the lobby for nine ball pool in Kuwait. Maybe someday we get to pick the fruits of that. Nice little tournament over there. Finally, a shot. A shot. Hmm. And just when you think an open table, the two and six tied up. Look at the green six and the blue two. No open table for you. That six ball on the break has been a, a regular thorn in Ashen's side. Yeah, it doesn't even go in any single pocket. He could pot the one in the side, but he can't break out the balls. Look, I like. Yes, I was. Yeah, I thought he was looking at. So he's going. It, he's looking at attacking the nine. Make sure to miss it, or hit Attention, it on please. our right side, so to always see the two. So it's a free shot. There's nothing else to play. Why not? It's like one out of 30 that he would make the, the nine. Less even. But you never know. Now he hit that nine ball thick. Cue ball there for slow. And this is a tricky angle. Yeah, I think he needs to play off the extreme right hand side edge of the blue two. And send the cue ball up. Trying to use the eight ball. As a blocker. Yeah, very thin, but quite some distance. The four is still tied up with the nine. Yeah, I like that. Mm. And what? I still like that, even if the, if the two is open. Well, the six ball was going to go in if you hit it a bit harder. It was obviously an offset plant, or combo, as we call it. He didn't look at that. He was just trying to play a container. Ah, in the heart of the pocket, needs the cue ball to bounce. OK, 
Okay, he's looking at the combo. Whoa. You got one on me, Elvin? Maybe I'll get one on you. Chose for angle instead of getting the cue ball off of the rail. This is almost where he can play straight onto the four ball. Bada bing, bada bang. Got one back. Six all. It really is a quick turnover of racks when you have combinations like that on the nine ball. Anything you can do, Omar Al Shaheen says, I can do just as well. And that's born out in the scoreline. One, one, one second. Okay, I've got it. I've got it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Our last kind of interval, really. Our last break together, should we say. 6-6 six, six the score, but I want to hear who you are backing. Okay, so make some noise if you're back in Omar Al Shaheen. Let's hear you. Now let's hear you if you're behind Al Benushan. Hopefully, a little bit of more motivation for the players. Last chance now to win some signed prizes. And this is the challenge, social media challenge. You need to take a selfie of you and your friends at today's event and share it with us at Matchroom Pool. And we'll pick out a winner for your chance to win some signed prizes. So once again, get those selfies in. It can even be a little bit of a video if you like to. Uh, get it into us at Matchroom Pool. And we'll announce our winner in the last break. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to a cracking final of the World Nine Ball Championship. It was a 1-9 combination from Alvin Aushin in rack 11. It was touche because it was a 4-9 combination from Omar Al Shaheen in rack 12. These are the stats. Alvin Aushin, 96 pot success rate, 96% that is. This afternoon in the semi-finals, he was even better than that, 99%. He had six break and run outs in overcoming David al -Kady. He's had three so far in this match. But Omar Al-Shaheen is a scrapper. He's done it all the way through the championship. Back. Staying with opponents, refusing to wave the white flag. And that's exactly how this match 
is panning out. Mr. Al Shaheen. Mm, slightly worrying stats. Or worrying. Uh, if I look at the stats, 6-6. Six, six, um, Elbin's productivity on the break is much higher. It's making more balls. But you can't see it in the scoreline. And four safety errors. And that's totally unlike uh, Elbin Ocean. I expected him to dominate the safety battles in this match. And uh, Omar is playing good defense, nice shots. But what we did spot is that Elbin a couple of times decided a little quick in the push-outs. So off the break shot, Omar's got a look at this one ball. He's not been in the lead yet in this final. Well. Couldn't have a better opportunity than this. Mm, let me see. Stun run through, I think, is the shot. I can roll. Rolling is easier to judge. I oh, he, he stunned it. No style points on that delivery. Which is totally irrelevant, of course. And that three ball might well be his best friend because, as I mentioned a little earlier, had Chris Melling potted that when they met, instead of missing it from distance, Al Shaheen would have been well gone. He said it himself after that wreck, after that win against Melling. I survived. I'm still in the tournament where I should have been out. In prime position to take the lead for the first time. Looks calm. He's taking time now to assess what he wants to do. To draw back, I think, with right spin. Going forward. He's feeling good. And so he should. He's about to take the lead. If he sinks this nine ball for the first time in the final. No mistake from 3 0 down. Omar Al Shaheen hits the front. How about that? So much at stake this evening. So much prize money, so much prestige, and also matchroom world pool ranking points. Now, Alvin Aushan will leave this building tonight as the world number one in that regard. Alexander Kazakis is second. But Omar Al Shaheen, if he were to win this final, he would have 95 points and would therefore move into the top 10 in ninth place, to be precise. Now, the significance of this for the Europeans is that Alex Laley and Carl Voyes, two members of the European Moscone Cup team, will come from those rankings, the top two, and then they have to decide on three wild cards, and of course, they have an embarrassment of riches. Right now, the top four players there, all European. But is the title going to Western Asia? Is it going to Kuwait? Imagine what that could do for the sport in the Uma. Kuwait, the Arab world. 28 years old, Omar Al Shaheen. Like a convinced player, but strong belief. Track number 14. Our current score is seven to six in favor of Mr. He has Al broken the trend. He has taken the lead for the first time. Often you then see a change of pace in the match. Would it surprise me for him to get a clear view of the one now? Needs to make the ball first.
tough match to play for the players. They are longing for position after the break. Get some rhythm. Now a lot of tactics. The next push out. Albin needs to play it. Or is the kick and stick available? Yeah, you could see the cue ball jump up in the air off the break from Omar. Very nice guys, Omar. Very chatty around the venues. Spends a lot of time in America playing in events over there and learning the game. He's almost as soft spoken as Elbin. Tricky this. Needs to check the cue ball to play kick and stick. I don't like that. Yeah, very tricky this because if he pushes over to the right, he's going to leave a combo. Can't push over to the left because he'll leave a pot. Push out. push out called. Tie up something. Look for something that you can block. Um, hmm, not much on. I would maybe roll up to the seven and leave him a kick just past the three ball. This Mr. Al Shaheen, your option? Do we like this? Do we give this back? One minute to think, Omar Al Shaheen. I like hitting it full into the four. It's it's just that if you hit it full into the four, Cuba will come back off table again. But just make sure not to pot it. Speed of the shot will tell us what he's playing straight away. Yes, yeah, so he's not playing the pot. He called it, Alex. This um, looks wonderful. Yeah, it's not a good push out. Four safety errors in the stats. We saw that before. This is. I don't think that this will be registered as a safety error by Elbin Ocean. But he did lose the safety battle. Yeah, two or three times now. The push out from Albin. And even when Omar's played a push, he didn't really properly look, did he? He just give it back, so... Needs to tighten up in that department. No. <laughs> oh, wow. But no cigar. Well, public enemy number one for Albin Ashen is that six ball again. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful kick. Now, if he can thin the two ball, he can overcut. I'm thinking. Can he save it? He can save it. Ooh. Ooh. This is a chance for Omar now to put some, you know, put some pressure on Alvin. Well, <laughs> some more pressure because yeah. Alvin Ocean is feeling it. He's under the cush right now. He wanted to. Maybe just drive his fist into the table, but thought better of it. I've seen plenty of players do that, and no one's ever won. We felt what happened. Omar felt it. He understroked that shot right there. Can just get his cueing arm in, though. Stay yeah, that's luck. I mean, yeah. at least he can stroke the ball here. Oh, 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 unleashed the stroke there. It's amazing how much of Cubal grabbed. Beautiful shot. Oh. Snatched, snatched. Oh, my. Snatched that stroke. We talked about his stroke. Is this pivotal moment in this final? He could have really put the pressure on Albin. He's had Albin on the ropes. Is that the let off? Yeah, too compact, I think. Didn't have enough contact with the ball. Ooh, and he let a major opportunity slip there. Yeah, also, he didn't need to jack down on the cue ball. He could have just floated it in. Left the shot on the purple five. Oh. Wow. Albin understands the value of that mistake.
could be very costly. It all depends, of course, on the break and on the six ball, if it's not going to ruin the party again. Yeah, maybe um, Albin will hope wing ball John puts the six on the wing ball <laughs> and goes in on the break. Yeah, mm. what kind of punishment is Omar going to get? He's obviously going to lose this rack, but is it going to cost him two or three, or will he get straight back out of his chair? What a swing. Well, there's no getting away from this fact. It's not subjective, it's objective. That was the worst mistake that Omar al Shaheen has made so far, and you can't help feeling it could be a pivotal moment. We've been waiting for it. With a cue action like his, as the pressure is cranked up, he becomes more susceptible. That's the way it works, and the thing four was missed. Yeah, it was Albin's biggest mistake of the match. And right after, Omar. And we see that so often. I got him. Could have gone two wrecks up. 7-0 instead of 8-6. With the break. With the break, yeah. And it would surprise nobody that plays his... There go. <laughs> Rack number 15. We are all tied at seven games apiece. Mr. Ocean to break. The race to six. I would like to have the breaks in the race to six. He likes it. Seven ball in. The four ball. Oh, he's it's okay. He's good. He's going to need the extension here, I think. How many racks is it going to cost, Omar? Three. Three racks? Just, it's a guesstimation. Okay. High follow. Come out off of the short rail. Can also come back, but you wouldn't want to flirt with the four and six. Mm, yeah, I think Alden will be following this cue ball through. Yeah, Ooh, he played it in a very confident on. way. Now, what he did, he played with a lot of pace to make that cue ball arc forward, attempting, attempting to get real close to that two ball instead of playing a normal high with Attention, inside please. or check side. That would have left him longer on the two on the diagonal. Can he pop this two ball and miss the cannon on the purple five? That's the big key coming up. If he can, just needs to pop the ball. Cue ball will come round naturally. He could. This is all about pace and it looks oh, good. Nice. That's not, yeah, of course it's skill, but it's mainly mental. Mental strength, stubbornness. Gave himself a tough position. Could have been very frustrated, but he just buckled down. Sank the two, is now back. Back in position. Yeah, and he knows this is going to hurt his opponent. It looked like Omar was going to go 8-6 up with the break. Should have. Yeah, should have, and then the unfortunate miss has let Albin back at the table. We once had a tournament in Romania where the players were heart rate meters. And the high, the peaks in heart rates were when the opponent made a good shot or a very bad shot or a fluke. So what I'm trying to say is when Albin played that poor safety on the two ball, Omar's heart rate spiked, leading, I think, to that miss on the four. Come across. 
Oh, my word. Didn't see that coming. Albin is usually so reliable. What a moment in this match. At the risk of repetition, it had to be the six. That's criminal, always play into the rail on a pool table. Makes the pocket so much bigger. Wow. So three big mistakes in total, in two wrecks. Pressure is mounting. And the winning line is getting ever closer. Alvin Ashen will be kicking himself there. The, the missed six ball, no one could have foreseen that. Omar Al Shaheen regains the advantage. The twists and turns created by pure pressure. Alban Auschen would not miss that green six ball in a month of Sundays under normal circumstances, but being in a final of the World Nine Ball Pool Championship does not qualify as normal circumstances. Hating himself right now for what was a horrible blunder. And his pot success rate plunges to 96%, still very good. 3% superior to that of Omar Al Shaheen. But the only stat that matters is the fact that Omar now has eight racks on the board, only five more required 
to be crowned champion of the world. Hey, Kaji, the presenter. So, a big, big miss by Albin. Big miss, the pressure will mount from here. He was favorite, the big favorite with the bookmakers. And the public, the general nine ball pool public. But Omar is up one, has the break, and feels, understands and knows that Elvin Ocean is vulnerable. We spoke about how many racks it would cost Omar. Rack and now number we'll speak 16. About how many racks it may cost Our current Alden. score is eight to seven. The pool gods have Mr. not been cooperative regarding position break. after the break. It would surprise me if that would continue all the way till the end. Expect the unexpected. Oh, the wing ball goes straight in the corner the one ball vanishes and this looks very pretty indeed for omar look at this split it's been a while yeah the purple five he's in a nice spot for the green six that's a little bit later on as as pool players we we glance around the table and just see if there's any problems doesn't look to be any problems alex without problems you'll look three balls ahead like now he needs to know where he wants to be on the four to get to the five. In this case, doesn't really matter on which side of the four he ends up. Doesn't want to be near the rail though, but well, yeah, just yeah. okay. <laughs> hey, was it not the four that he missed with the jacked up shot, Omar Al Shaheen? Let's check out his action this time. Yeah, Albin's looking down to the floor, he knows. He's, he's sat there thinking, what have I done? It's all right saying forget about it, it's the past. That is easier said than done. Yeah, he's under it right now. He's not the favourite anymore. No, he's under severe pressure now. And that's okay. He can, well, I'll say that, he'd liked another roll. He might be able to just kind of cinch this in and kill the cue ball. I think he's going to play a big shot with the cue ball now. Spinning round. Or two rails, long rail to the left of the eight, a short rail. Needs a bit of fortune here. What is he doing <laughs> here? It's, it, it's nice, though, to watch a shot maker play. They play position sort of. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is a big eight ball now in the context of the match. This is big. Ah, job well done. Two balls coming down. A real tidy. As we've seen, the nine ball on the back rail. This is unmissable. Is that an important moment for the first time? Omar Al Shaheen leads by a couple of racks. The scoreline is 9-7 against the pre-match favourites, Alvin Aushin. He is going through the ringer. Realises that he made a blunder on the sixth ball two racks ago. Is he going to get out of jail? One thing we do know, the pressure here, the drama, that will be replicated from the 7th to the 10th of December this year at Alexandra Palace in London because the Moscone Cup returns to what is now its home here in the UK. We were away last year for obvious reasons because of the COVID-19 pandemic, but now Ali Pali welcomes that great occasion back again. Europe against the USA. There's nothing quite like it. Yeah, it goes off in London, Phil. It's as simple as that. We missed the fans last year. They're going to be back this year. And it's going to be loud. It's going to be exciting. 
we just can't wait. It's going to be loud, <laughs> it's going to be exciting, and that's just the pre-match press conference, knowing you go. Oh, there'll be some bad tips, Phil. Don't worry about that. We've got a few tricks. Bring the tiger. Not my sleeve. Mr. Al-Shaheen. <laughs> Mr. Al-Shaheen to break. Two wreck gap. Still needs four wrecks. Looks a different player from his semi-final. I think that was more a case of he's not used to the arena and the table, but now he's used to it. He's won a semi-final match in the World Pool Championships center stage. He looks looks a lot better, doesn't he now? Mm. This is a nasty situation. Yeah, the position on the lowest numbered ball does not look nice. That three balls landed in one of the worst positions on a pool table. Oh, sorry, the two ball is ready. Yeah, two yeah, is yeah, yeah. Corner. So what do we like? Does the three ball pass to four? If not, or if it's just nasty, frozen on the rail, he, he has an angle to try and bump it, I think. No good. No, I don't like that. Yeah, he's, tr he's tried to get the cue ball on the side rail, hasn't he? But yeah, but I I'd rather be close than trying to get straight in. This is not easy to play. Well measured safety. Beautiful Did he get it? Shot. Yeah, that's. Maybe not. The crowd are cheering, so. Is there a jump shot? Can he see the potting angle? It's a jump, and the three balls close to the pocket. The mm. type of shot he just played, yeah. Oh, Alex and his one pocket. It's a shot that you play in one pocket a lot. Extension, please. But the nine ball in one pocket, freeze the cue ball. Make it tight. Yeah, if anybody's watching, wondering what one pocket is, it's just a game that you play on a pool table. Albin's going airborne. He trails nine racks to seven. This is a big shot coming up. Needs to get the cue ball back down the table for the pink four. Whoa. Watch out, eight ball. And that's not bad. That's not bad. It's at all. not bad, but look where but it's the not <laughs> Look where the purple five is. There's a gap though. There's a gap in between the black eight and the side pocket. This shot. Difficulty level to get to the left side of the purple five, a nine and a half, given the circumstances. Is he going to try and find the gap between the eight and the right side pocket? He is. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Oh, what a shot. That is the shot of the match for Alvin in the context of where we're at. That was a beauty. It will help him forget that missed six ball. Beautiful shot. Now needs to capitalize, no more unusual errors. Mm. Watch out, eight ball, that's gonna make things a little bit more difficult. If you if he stuns and hit the cue ball, hits the cue ball just a little bit too low, that corner pocket looms large, so must make sure to play stun run through. Just above center. And it's the green six ball. And that's okay, is it? Yeah, that's okay. What a final. What a final. You can feel the tension now. You really can. Clean. In the fat side of the pocket, though, not the rail side, <laughs> yeah, was yeah, it? <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> that's what you said when he missed the six. Yeah. Always play it fat. So you can let it slide in off the long rail. You would have loved another cue ball over to the left watch how softy it's this pocket speed so if you miss it you can still wobble and go in plays that shot as good as anybody else in the world 
big rack, Alex, this one, wasn't it? Fight and fortitude from Alvin Ausham. It was getting a little scary for him. Now, though, the gap is only one. Omar Al Shaheen leads 9 8. I think Michael is with a pool legend. Yes, I am indeed for a man who knows how to win these certain situations, Ralph Suke. And a real honour to have you up here, Ralph. Assess the game so far for me. Well, it's a very exciting game. It's, uh, you know, I didn't actually expect it to be that close because I watched uh, both semi-finals and uh, obviously Albin's performance was great. Omar's was good as well, but uh, I expected it, as I said, not that close as it turned out to be. Last few days, Albin has been absolutely flawless, Ralph, but today he's made one or two mistakes in this final and Omar has, 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 has done really well, hasn't he? Yeah, I mean, uh, I know him because I've, I've been to Kuwait several years ago, so I had a few practice sessions with him. And, uh, but I also know Albin quite well because we play for the same club in Germany. So, I mean, we, we've been friends for so many years. Uh, and I'm actually happy to see both these players in the finals. What would it do for, you know, for Omar? I mean, you know, the, the nation of Kuwait, well, they'd be so incredibly proud, wouldn't they, to have a world champion? Yeah, I mean, that would be great for the whole Middle East. I mean, you know, uh, yeah, that would be just awesome to, to get a world champion out of there. But on the other hand, you know, I mean, obviously score. Albin wants to win the title nine, as well. Three. So it's, but it's going to be In favor good no matter Al what happened. Shaheen. Absolutely, Ralph, thank you very much. So right, Ocean, nine, eight. to break. Ralph Suka there, won a giant, a six-time world Masters champion. Hello. Oh, hello, hello, hello. Wow. The reward for the great run out before. And it's about doing simple things perfect under immense, immense pressure. Yeah, just like this situation. Don't try and get the cue ball close to the two. Just, just leave it long. Get past the six ball. Needs minimal movement of the cue ball in this rack. This is really connecting the dots. Don't often see pool players using the bridge, so I'm not certain how skilled he is with it, but it's an easy shot. I said minimal movement. Apart from his route from the six to the seven later on. Straight on the six ball wouldn't be the end of the world because you could just pull the cue ball back a little bit and fire the seven in. Cue ball off three rails. Well, straight on the five would be good. Yeah. Because as close as the five is to the side pocket, he'll be able to manipulate. Play it thick or thin in the pocket. He's thin, he will need to travel the cue ball here. Don't think he can hold. Well, I like those carbon shafts on these shots. No, he's going to the short drill. And bounce back up. Nice. Leave an angle on the seven. Mid table would do good to swing the cue ball round and land on the right side of the eight. Yeah, angle is. Is needed on the seven. Can't be messing around going straight on the So he's not looking at the exact position, he's looking at the zone. How much mar margin does he have? Yeah, I like it. That's why he didn't even bother going up near the seven. Just keep the cue ball down here. Guaranteed the angle. That is what's key. So he's playing three, yeah? Yeah, well, do you do you always make sure you hit the third? Or are you happy just getting that line? And even if it lands no, on the No, I rail? like getting to the third if I can. I like it for a reference. It'll slide a little bit. 
nice and clean in the heart of the pocket. Smooth operator, he's back. It's been a beautiful match so far, this. We've had everything. We've had a little three-pack out the gate. We've had push-out mistakes, some good safeties from Omar, and the odd miss to make it exciting. 9-9. Nine, nine. Best of 25 racks at the start has been distilled to the best of seven. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, please give it up. Omar Al Shaheen and Albin Ushan right down to the wire. 9-9. Nine, nine. So they've been fooling me a bit here at Matchroom. They, they've been making me give out single signed balls. But actually now, this time, I have a signed cue, ladies and gentlemen. Just a few players on there, ladies and gentlemen. And of course, it was a selfie competition. And we have picked a winner. And you'll need to put your eyes on the big screen because in three, two, one, we're going to see our winner. Let's go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our winner is Arian Harris. Round of applause, please, for Arian. And I heard, sir, it is your birthday as well, ladies and gentlemen. So let's, let's give him a quick hip, hip. Hip, hip. Hip, hip. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, your winner, Arian Harris. Sometimes matches disappoint. Sometimes finals are a letdown. Not this one. It's been compelling from the start. And we're still no wiser about who's going to win, although I do have a sneaking suspicion that maybe, just maybe, Alban Ashen has weathered the mid-match storm. It is 9-9. He gets to break in the 19th rack in this race to 13. During the break, Albin Ocean and Omar Al Shaheen in their chair, totally focused. These guys have worked to hone their skills on the table, but also their concentration Back. Number 19. To be impermeable. Our current score is tied wow. up at race nine to four. To nine. Mr. Ocean They're firing to break. all cylinders. Albin now. Looking to pocket the ball and see the one. Well 
lost the cue ball. A, a lucky kiss from the six. Guess what? For once, the six offers a helping hand. Play back call. Yeah, the seven ball has sat over that top right, so that makes it a nice combo. Playing the one onto the seven. Done well here as Alvin after that missed six. Got himself back in the match. Showed a lot of heart and character. And this, this is a good chance. A lot of ground to cover from the one back down to the three and then back up to for the four. And then back down for the five again. I think the hardest shot is this one. From the one to the three. Where he has the least room to work with. Extension. Extension, please. Yeah, is he gonna just even could even consider hit I don't know how far the one is off the short rail to play rail first into the short rail hit the one ball thick and stay on the right side and come all the way down yeah what you saying let's see what he's gonna play he took a gamble needs to hold up that's, Did well. that's pretty good yeah, yeah real that's nice. real good yeah, because, like you said, he took a gamble. It's a very sensitive shot speed-wise. The fear of getting stuck on the rail or snookering yourself can lead to a de deceleration. Another good one. Good. Problem solved. Yeah, the balls are going in off the jaw a lot. Not going centre of the pocket. Good enough, he can check this. On the TV table, playing with check side, it does throw the cue ball off more than what they're used to on an older cloth. Might be able to draw the cue ball over off the side rail. If it's on, it's a nicer stroke. Or that. Yeah, that's fine as well. Found the gap in between the six and the nine. We'll probably play a similar shot here. Spin it off two rails. Back out for the eight ball in the same pocket as the six. Straight or angled, it's all good. Hmm. I think that's okay. I think he can. He can? I think so, yeah. I think he can kind of just roll it in Whoa. and leave a thinner nine than he would have liked. <laughs> yeah, but then he needs to hit it in the fat side of the pocket if he overcuts it a little bit. Yeah, I mean, obviously, well, he might play it hard, yeah, let's just see. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, good stroke, Alvin, very good stroke. And they've been a little bit worried there, haven't they? Alvin Auschen, his fifth break and run out of this final. He started with three in succession, and now he's produced two on the bounce at the very heart of this final when they were needed most. Is he starting to get on top? Well, he leads 10-9. So much excitement, so much quality in this tournament. 128 players here. When we go to the US Open Pool Championship in September, it's at a field of 256. I'm led to believe we're going to have 33 tables there. It runs from September the 13th to the 18th in Atlantic City. Harrah's Resort will be the place to be.
here. We can't wait for that one. I believe a certain Alex Laley wants to play in that tournament as well, Phil. You never know. So we might just be commentating on one of your games. No, no. Oh, yes, Put buddy. me on the outside <laughs> ring. Put no. me on the outside ring. I'll be making sure your sentence is Mr. Ocean. Mr. Ocean oh. to break. Oh, Ooh. lost the cue ball there. Again, as in the previous break. Just a sign of the pressure that is out there. Muscles are getting tense. Now, we've seen a few poor push-outs from Alvin, so I think it's time to put a lot of focus into this one. Oh, yeah, it's difficult. Difficult push. The two ball doesn't pass the six. It does go in the top left or the right centre. Maybe that's something to think about. And if you roll into the five and put it on the rail there, you, you won't attack the one because the two ball Push doesn't pass ball. and the cue ball is going to run into the nine. Mm. And difficult to play safe from there. Um, Mr. Al Shaheen, your no, option. He'll play. I think he'll play this. Bank it up table. Make sure it goes past the side pocket. Cubal passes the nine. <coughs> but yeah, 50 50. If he doesn't fancy it, give it back. He's not. Albin is not, I think, going to be able to put that cubal underneath the eight. He'll focus on the one ball to make sure it passes this, the 8 7 line. You can see there with his Q action sights out of his left eye. I don't, don't think. think this is going to be good, you know. I think this is going to be an easy one railer. No. No? No. Real first is not on. Are you sure? I'm sitting right behind the shot. That's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Give me my glasses. Attention, please. No, I don't think it's on. Okay. Massé. Oh. Oh. And the difficulty here is that the ball that he wants to clear, the seven, is so far away. Yep, he called it. He's through the seven. What a good chance now for Alvin. More than a good Back chance. Point, it's vital, essential, of the utmost importance to get this. Remember, Omar could have played the safety. He decided to put Alvin back. Eight as a combination is makeable, but with combinations, it's always about controlling the first ball. Well, he does have an angle because he's just walked round to get behind the four. Mm. Perfect. P this is so sweet. The high. The most pressure thinkable world championship final. The final phase, the closing stages of this match to then position the cue ball like that. How sweet is it? Yeah, I mean, Attention, do you like stunning off the left rail high? Yeah. Above the middle pocket? Yes, I think it's sitting nicely for that shot. Otherwise, you have to play a stun run through. This is the most natural shot. Oi! Came very close. 
to the, do the jaw off the side pocket. Yeah, he played that quite soft. Thought he was going to use the top rail as well, but whatever. He's in good position. The bounce back ability of Albanusian. Mr. Big Ball. I think somewhere we have a situation. It's audible for Albin. He looked and understood that it can't be solved right now. So he continues. Yes, unmistakable noise backstage. Very badly timed. Yeah, it sounds like somebody's had a few too many sherbets to me. <laughs> so I'm sure I'm sure security are taking care of that as I'll be. It's been a nice wrap this. Timely rack as well. Wow. You said it right. As if that six never happened. He has won four racks on the trot, but it was vital that he regained his early form. Albin Ashen now leads 11 9. Two more to reclaim the world title. He originally captured in 2016. That was the shot that cost Omar Al Shaheen in that rack. Just clipping the seven, trying to escape that hook. And from there, with ball in hand, you fancied Al Shaheen to clear up, which he most certainly did. Albin lost a couple of push-out battles. This one, a vital one. He got it with the ball in hand. A two-rack lead, a small buffer. Imagine if you could break and run the next. It's been a very evenly matched final as this. Shaking his arm a little bit, trying to stay loose. The last two breaks by Elbin, he lost control of the cue ball. And it's tempting to break conservatively when you're feeling the heat out there, but don't do it. Not on the break, be positive. Don't hold back. That's asking for trouble. At 100%, 70, 75% speed here. Oh, nice. Wow. Look at the split. Does the six pass the nine? If it doesn't, it could be a combo. Also goes in the bottom right pocket as well, so we'll see how this unfolds. Wasn't the best of breaks regarding the cue ball. Unless he played the cup break. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt. It's uh, it's not a surprise that breaks are opening up nicely now. We've had so many push outs. Breaks where they couldn't see the lowest numbered ball. But what a timing. You saw the stuff there about the average number of balls made on the break in this final. And there's no doubt, indisputable, that Aushin has been the better breaker of the two. Yeah, I mean, you know, you, you just, you, you can't put the balls where you want off the break, can you? It's just one of them. He's just at the latter end of this match. They've just come out OK for him. A little bit too much angle on the six, so Attention, he's please. 
weighing his options which stroke presents itself best which one is the nicest to play you don't think what's the best spot to put the cue ball in you're under the gun you have a little bit of angle what shot do I like the most just a high ball in between the eight seven yeah I like that playing for the seven in the left corner he could hold it. Well, could he hold it? <coughs> hmm. Not too bad. The cue ball will be travelling, so speed is key. Yeah, he can get over to this right-hand side of the table, so he's OK. I thought he'd play, as you said, for the corner. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. He obviously could hold it. He's done a good job anywhere on the right side. Even where his bridge hand is now, he'd take Needs a cue ball to slow down. Oh, that's perfect. That's right where his bridge jam was. Two rails. Floated in. Just a trace of right spin, right? Yeah, or just just anything really. Just pot the ball. <laughs> just pot the ball and you're on the hill. Cue ball will come down. No problems. It went in the heart of the pocket. What a performance at the latter stages of this match. After missing that sixth ball, Omar has not really been seen. He's on the hill! How about this from Alban Aushan? The performance of a champion elect, maybe. He needs one more, and he's going to be world champion in the nine ball division for the second time in his life.
with Mario He. He has won two World Cups. He's won a China Open. His trophy cabinet is half the size of Austria. But what he wants most of all is to join the Giants who have won the World Nine Ball Championship on more than one occasion. And Alban Auschen is now almost there on the hill, breaking off. Rack number 22. Our current score is 12 to 9 in favor of Mr. Ocean. Mr. Ocean to break on the hill. He needs one good break. Try and control the cue ball. Pray you get a shot on the lowest ball. And hold yourself together. And you are champion of the world. Come on. Cue ball's getting kicked. It was a bit flat, weren't it, Alex, the break? It was a bit slappy. Hmm. It worked before. I think the way the match has gone, it's probably a fair thing to happen. It would have been very unkind. Yes, I, break and run. I concur. Omar, sure now to get back to the table. Gunner, push out. Difficult push. Push out cold. Whatever side he exposes of the of the one ball, you have to eight, five, and nine. Mr. Al Shaheen, your option. So if Shaheen off of the left side of the one does not have a scratching line for the cue ball, he can play half ball, three quarter ball, cue ball to the long row on our left, and bank the one up. It's just one of a couple of possibilities, but that's a, a, a containing shot with a big chance to snooker behind the five. Yeah, I think he's got to be careful because if he gives it back, I think that's the shot Alden will play, and I think well, it's favourable at getting the hook. Thanks Last time he cold. gave it back, Alden played a good defensive shot and forced the ball in hand. Now he stepped over to the left because he's had a look at the potting angle into the bottom right. Super difficult shot. Yeah. Don't think he's playing that. I think he's playing the safe. Well, he's well. That was a sign of desperation. And this is a chance now for Albin. I think can he get through to the potting angle? I think well, he can. I like Glenn B just as much. Stick it behind the six. Play the one ball, three rails around the four. Extension called. Of course, he would like to attack from here. Seize the opportunity. I think he's okay. I think he can play with a bit of left spin. He could hit the rail. Yes, it's the, on. The long rail. And it will swallow it up. Omar it's on. showed a bit of impatience there, didn't he? Once he had a look at the potting angle, he, he didn't really have another look, so it was all very rushed. This is a chance. Oh, it's there. It's there, folks. Look at the balls. Is the 223rd match over the last five days here coming to a conclusion? You have to believe so. Apart from a shot of four or five or so, Elvin Ocean looks like they have ice water veins. Even that shot is perfect because he's got close to his work. So that makes the pot more unmissable. He can just play a, an easy positional shot now for the six. The eight is sat pretty. There you see, just a little stop shot. The dreaded six. But don't worry. No, he's good here. He's good. This will go in nice and soft. Well, we'll see where the six goes in what side of the pocket. Yes. 
job done. This is it. What a feeling when you're still out there, but effectively you know you're over the line. He took a deep breath then. He knows he's about to win the tournament. And I'll tell you what, you two guys, Alex Bailey and Carl Boys, in your capacity as captain and vice-captain of the Moscone Cup team, you've got a good one here. Yeah, he's done well there. He showed a lot of heart, a lot of focus, kept it together. Never give up. What a player, what a world champion. Two-time world tour champion, Alvin Olsen. Congratulations. Alex, final thoughts? Hill Hill, Alvin Ocean, world champion. Stayed strong, stayed cool. Was down for a little bit, looked like giving away that final, but he clawed his way back in, took control, and never looked back over his shoulder. A deserved winner. Of course, he did lose a match here. It's. Not all single elimination, early on it was double elimination and he was beaten in his second match by Roberto Gomez. After that though, he was flawless against some very good opponents. David Alcady in the semi-finals. Skyler Woodward in the quarter-finals, he pulled away from 5-5 to 11-5 there. Torsten Homan, a former world champion, twice he's won this title, but Aushan beat him in the last 32, 11-7. And now he is the king of the hill. Not on the hill, the king of it. Yeah, also I want to say congratulations to Omar Al Shaheen. You played a wonderful final. It was a great match. For the fans, the fans were back to see Albin Ocean become world tool champion. And of course, to the winner of the spoils, a first prize of 50,000. US dollars. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Matchroom Pool World Pool Championship official presentation. And to ensure we go through this nice and smoothly, ladies and gentlemen, round of applause. Give her some love and appreciation. The managing director of Matchroom Multisport, Emily Fraser. Yeah, big thank you to Emily and Matchroom for three fantastic pool tournaments in succession. It's back where it belongs. It's been a brilliant tournament, hasn't it, everyone? Yeah. Yeah. E Emily, the, the fans have been absolutely magnificent today. We've had the World Cup, the World Pool Masters, and then we've had the big one, the World Pool Championship. You yourself have worked so hard, but you must be very proud. Well, I just want to thank every single person in here that's bought a ticket in here tonight. You have made this atmosphere in here and it's been fantastic for the players. So thank you to you all, it's fantastic. <laughs> but what an incredible event we've had. Uh, we've had such a fantastic team on the ground with 16 tables, 128 players coming in. The format's been really well thought out and just so many great people here on site getting the event together and the high caliber of players that we've had. I mean, a huge respect to Omar. He always plays the circuit. He's always at every event, knocking the door on the matchroom pool events, not always quite getting there. 
But Omar, you have just proven why you should be at these matching events. You are in the final. Second place. <laughs> Very, very well said, Emily. Um, Albin, a few days ago, I saw you slumped in your chair after that match against Roberto Gomez, and I think what was going through your head was, oh, no, please not again. I don't want to be back up there as a co-presenter. I want to be here winning world championships. Is that what was going through your head? Uh, yeah, definitely. I think uh, after the loss against Roberto, I thought, OK, what's going to happen next? Uh, but then actually, I uh, just uh, swallowed it down and uh, came strong the next day. and. I'm here. Yeah, I mean, I think you've shown your class and you've got better as the games have, uh, have gone on and, and you're a worthy champion, and, uh, Alvin. You must be really proud of yourself. Yeah, of course. I um, uh, had a very good start in this match and a very good end uh, also, but uh, the middle section was a little bit rough um, for me. But uh, uh, heads up to, to Omar. He played a great match and I'm very happy that he went for the one ball. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Omar, the, the, the beauty of, of, of World Pool is we've got so many phenomenal players, literally from all over the world. You've done your country, your family and your friends really proud of this tournament. How do you feel? I'm, I'm, I'm feeling great, you know. It's just the final is like all the players know it's tough, you know. One miss ball, like you got to lose that much. Alvin plays great. I have a couple of mistakes, but I'm totally proud. Like all over the Middle East, I know a lot of people, they are so happy, so happy, and I'm excited and so proud about that. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. Yeah. The, the, good, the good news is, the good news is, Omar, you know, this sport is gonna, it's going from strength to strength. There's some huge plans over the next few months and years. So these are big ranking points for you, and the aim and the determination is to make these rankings crucial. Weekly, monthly, everyone's going to be looking. So this is a great start for you. So you should be very, very proud. Everybody, Omar al Shaheen. Finally, Albin, the two-time world champion. You're not only a world champion again, you're also the new world number one. So it's been a pretty, pretty good week for you, hasn't it? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm quite speechless now. I, I didn't think uh, for one second about the ranking or anything else or the check. Or, but of course, when you're finished, uh, you're thinking about it, and it's a very nice surprise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, as I said, it could, it could have some huge bearings going forward, you know, in, in the world of Paul. And also, it could seal, could, could, Alex, you say, your place in the Moscone Cup. Yeah. With, Really? Uh, we, we, we've got the US Open. We've got the US Open to come, Albin. We've got the Moscone Cup to come. But right now, let's focus on what it's all about: the World Pool Championship. Albin Ocean, the World Pool Champ. Alvin Ocean is the 2021 World Pool Champion. So let's get that updated roll of honour. There we go. That is some less. And confirmation, the new World Champion. Alvin Ocean, 2021 Champion. And as I mentioned earlier about rankings and the importance of these going forward in the world of pool, here we go. He's there. So he's not only the world champion, he's the world number one. And I'll tell you, we're talking about Moscone Cup, hasn't Alex Lady got some decisions to make? The 
because that is dominated by Europe. But Albin Ocean is the world champion, the world number one. He's had a phenomenal week and he deserves it. Well, what a fantastic few days we've had here. Phenomenal, Paul. All 128 players have done themselves proud. You've all done yourselves proud tonight. So thank you very much. We've had three phenomenal tournaments in the last few weeks. And we are coming back very soon for the US Open in September. But for now, a very good night.